Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm on my own tonight. Um, I've sent the link out to everybody, but no one seems to be coming in. Nando's out with his wife. I presume Chris is probably with Tracy. I see he's in the chat. I don't know why he's not come up. Bless him. Maybe the link hasn't gone through, but I have sent the link to him. Um, we have a great guest tonight, um, and he... Well, I had the pleasure of meeting this gentleman um, at the Festival of the Unexplained. Um, and we had a good time. And there was a few dodgy photos going around and and um, some pint glasses on heads, which I'm sure he will talk about. But he's also the author of this very good book, um, which I happen to have got my hands on. Um, so I'm going to bring Neil on. He's a historian. Some of you may have seen him on sam and colby's show um there's also a lot of other stuff he's been working on so we're going to bring him up um and i'm just going to let him talk and uh if anyone has any questions for neil please put it in the chat and we will uh put them over to him um i'd like to say hi to everyone that's in the chat we do have quite a few on facebook and a few of you on youtube but now i'm going to bring up neil because he's the important one and i'm not Oh, and happy Valentine's Day. There Good you evening, sir. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Oh, great. I feel I feel like I've been ghosted by Nando. Uh, he, he has sent me a message saying I will be there as soon as I can. I think he's finishing up dinner. At this rate, he's going to have to bring the lube because he's a bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're on your bed. I'm sitting in my bedroom. So if he's got to bring the lube... Hey. Who knows? It's Valentine's night. What better situation to be <laughs> in the in the quiet room? I'm here because it's quiet. It's nice. Yeah. But also, it has the ambiance to it. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true. That's very true. So, hello everybody, and thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. So, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? First of all, I want to clear up about those dodgy photographs. Right, there, okay. there is no semi or full nudity at all. Right, it's just. No. No, there's none of there that. There was alcohol involved, and it was balancing a, a goblet of beer on my head. It, it's all Danny's fault, like right? Danny Moss. Yeah. By his name is Shame Time, Danny. And <laughs> I didn't get a Valentine's card. Yeah. I'm feeling a bit hurt, but I can live with it. But Danny, you you goaded me to that, and you paid the price the next morning. He did. He did. He was very um, broken the next morning, wasn't he? He, he was. He, he was subdued. Yes. Yeah. And the scary thing was when we saw him, so we saw him just after breakfast, Nando was still suffering because they'd been drinking neat kraken um later on that evening. After I did the see the bottle. I, I, yeah. I did see it. I passed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I done. I just passed yeah, it the other way out. Like, but hey, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> um so Nando was rolling up the stairs at one point. And Danny was sitting in the corner behind the little table in the room where it said his name. And he was like, yeah, I've got to go and film later. And I was just yeah. like, you're not filming anything, mate. You're what done. Honor, <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I can't wait to see him again this year. Come on. Yeah. It'll be great. It'll be good. It'll be good. So, um, if you'd like to tell the people a little bit about yourself now. Me? Well, my name's Neil Story. I'm a historian. A uh, proper one, I guess. I studied at University of East Anglia, uh, pre and post grad. I've written about 50 books. I've been on all sorts of TV shows, including Help My House is Haunted, where in every series, you've always got to have a diff different historian for each location. But in every series, I think it's in series two, I've had a slot on there. And they're a lovely team to work with. Years ago, I did a Most Haunted a magic and mystery show with Eamon Holmes years ago. And I've loved my my life as a historian, but I've always had that kind of little side interest. And, and it, well, is it a side interest? It, it takes you over, doesn't it? Yeah. In the paranormal I and, and gothic horror. So from an, a very early age, I've collected Dracula books and books on witches and ghosts and legends. And I've grown, I grew up in the county of Norfolk, which is filled with stories of witches and ghosts and legends and all sorts of weird and wonderful things. So I've been really, I'm really lucky. And, I, and I'm really lucky to have lovely people that have helped me along the way. You can't research history, I think, solo. You've got to have some good help. 
and a little bit of guidance some people are willing to share with you yeah and you can preserve stories that could almost be lost forever it's it's i'm a very very lucky man i love what i do no well like i say when i met you at the uh festival it was um it was very interesting and your talk was very insightful and i enjoyed it which then made me go out and purchase this one hey. Hey. and it is wonderful Thank it's you. like i don't big up very many books but yeah that's got me got me hook line and sinker um so what was your what was your idea behind the book what made you want to write about bram oh for a lot of years i never thought i was worthy you know this this there are some super biographies that out there but I always thought I want to bring something new to the table. And way back in 2012, which was so many years anniversary of the death of, of, of Bram. In fact, he died in, in 1912. So 2012, 100th anniversary. And on the Isle of Man, they've got the Hall Kane archive of letters and manuscripts and all sorts. Now, Hall Kane, in his day, he was one of the greatest authors. He was the first man to sell a million books in the English language. They made early films, they made stage plays, but his books haven't really translated for modern audiences. So a lot of people haven't heard of Hall Kane. But Hall Kane and Bram, in fact, Hall Kane and Bram Stoker were great friends. And in fact, if you've got a copy of Dracula, and if you have a look on the inside cover, you'll see it's dedicated to my dear friend, Homie Beg. Now, what on earth is Homie Beg? Is it an Eastern potentate? Is it an anagram? But it's actually Manx. Now, the Isle of Man is where Hall Kane's grandmother lived, and he used to go and stay with her. And Homie Beg means little man. That's literally what it means in Manx. Oh, wow. Bram knew. <coughs> that that was the affectionate name for um, Hall Kane, for his friend. And so hence the dedication. So I knew that. I knew about that connection. When my friend Stuart Evans uncovered uh, a most dramatic letter that named a new Jack the Ripper suspect, it named Francis Tumblety, who is an American quack doctor, but he's the number one, special branch number one, suspect for jack the ripper yeah and there was a documentary made a lady called vivian allen she was the biographer of hall kane and she pointed out that you know he and uh tumble had been in a in a in a homosexual relationship and they exchanged letters in which you could really see that tumble hated women when i eventually got to access those letters in fact it took me all in all about 10 years to get access to them because they were being catalogued but when I did, I went over to, I'd been teaching on the Isle of Man, then I went, contacted the library, kept in touch with them. And then I, I was regularly teaching sort of what, for a little spell every year there at King Williams College. And one year, Wendy Thurkettle at the archive said, Neil, we've got to the last box. So we go through the last box together? And we did. And I found these incredible letters from Francis Tumblety to Hall Kane. It's... I think there's about 60 of those with telegrams. So that's regarded as the greatest collection of letters from a contemporary Jack the Ripper suspect ever published. So I, they, they all went into the Dracula secrets because wow. I knew of the connection between Hall Kane and Bram Stoker. So Bram, once you read Dracula, you can see that there's clues in there that he alludes to the crimes the Whitechapel murders, the murders of Jack the Ripper in 1888. And there's all sorts of, Bram used to love putting codes and secrets into his books and in jokes with his friends. So it was lovely to write that, but I thought <sighs> immediately after that, I'd found all these letters from Bram Stoker to Hall Kane. I copied them all, photographed them, and I thought one day I will do something with them. Yeah, but 2012 rolled into 2013, and my life as a historian, a social historian, I've always been interested in military history, not the grand battles and stuff. You've got to understand those, of course. But I wanted to know about the stories of ordinary men and women 
that did their bit at home and abroad, soldiers and on the home front. And I dedicated my life throughout the centenary of the First World War to creating special events for communities and cities like uh, Norwich, <coughs> County of Norfolk. We had our biggest exhibition of the Great War in, in Norwich and in Newcastle, working with the cathedral and a host of other places to really tell the story of these ordinary guys. So I didn't get round to Bram. Ah, OK. But once it's 2019, it's the, the centenary. And, it, and my, my love of working and in the realm of the First World War, the stories, that will never go. But I've now been able to focus the last few years really on that that archive of Bram's letters because his handwriting's a blooming nightmare. He he even made a joke about it. They, and in fact, Dacre Stoker, who is the great grand nephew of Bram Stoker, we get on very very well. And he's been so supportive. I have all of the Stoker family. Um, we make a joke that Bram's handwriting is Stoker ease. You can hardly write <coughs> read it. But he was writing like fifty letters a day sometimes. Yeah. So it took a while to translate those, and I've been collecting Bram Stoker material now. Uh, Bram became the uh, acting manager of the Lyceum Theatre in the West End of London. When the greatest actor of the day, Sir Henry Irving, had the lease and his leading lady was Dame Ellen Terry. It was the finest theatre in all of London. They played Shakespeare and some great dramas. And Bram Stoker had got to know Sir Henry Irving when he was an up-and-coming actor. And yeah. Bram used to earn a bit of money writing reviews uh, well not really earning any money he earned the tickets he got the tickets for free but they didn't pay him for his reviews he just wanted to go to the theater you know? and he loved what irving was doing and he re they really understood each other and the, the kind of the attitude towards making theater work so when irving takes over the lyceum bram, bram becomes his acting manager so there's all sorts of letters and correspondence associated with the theatre, written by Bram, places they've been, newspaper articles, tracking down obscure stories. Because Bram didn't just write Dracula, he wrote a number of other, he wrote um, non-fiction articles interviewing famous people. And a series of books, over, over 10 novels and novellas over the years, good stuff. Uh, but they're almost all forgotten. I think people know about Lair of the White Worm. Yeah. And when Henry Irving died, he wrote this two-volumed biography, <coughs> which were personal reminiscences of, Sir Hen of Henry Irving by Bram Stoker. But when Bram died, that was supposedly his greatest literary legacy. Dracula was just with the other fiction works. But... Dracula, first published in 1897, has never been out of print. Oh, wow. wow. I just wish Bram could have seen its success. Right. Chris has now joined us, so he's finished his happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Hello, Chris. Oh, no, I hope you're well. Sorry. Very, very well. Thank you. So I'm like... Are you steaming? Is your beard on fire? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Are you steaming? No, he's smoking. He's got a cigarette. Oh, you bad boy. Ah, look at that. Like your yeah. style. Good man. Yeah, <laughs> hide the cigarette. <laughs> so how long did it take you to write this? Oh, I mean, all in all, it's most of my life collecting the material, but I would have thought probably the best part, two to three years, or all, all in all. But I normally write... Um, another book at the same time so if i kind of get to the end of research of one <coughs> if i need a break from it and i need a complete break for a little while i'll write the other one so there's normally a couple in tandem you know okay that's cool that's interesting but i love i love in also in love inhabiting the realm of bram stoker going to places that he used to love um to go to eat and visit them places like slane's castle and edinburgh I've been really lucky that my work takes me around the country to those places and our wonderful paranormal tours yeah. with American guests and wonderful people like Dave Schrader. Oh, uh, we've got you know, that, haven't we? Uh, 
it's I, I love touring with with Dave and Annie Peron, <coughs> who wrote the books that turned into the film The Conjuring. Yeah, and and Annie is easy company, one of the most lovely, soulful ladies around. You know, nice people. So I'm I'm really lucky to go on my mysterious adventure tours. Yeah, that's all right. That's good. Um, again, if anyone has any questions, can you please like send them over in the chat so I can relay them? Um, so since the festival, which was back in August last wow. year. Wow, is it that long ago? Yeah, wow. no, it's, it's gone really quick. Um, what, have you, uh, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Well, I can't say too much about some of it. Okay. Because we've... But I can kind of say a little bit. I've been filming the new celebrity help my house is haunted. Oh, okay. So there, and that's this, yeah. Uh, so there's one out now. Yeah. So you never know what might come along in the in the future. And there's there's some exciting little pro, little telly projects along the way. So we'll see what happens with those. Uh, the new book that I've been writing looks at ufos over britain nice now i i just i found an archive in fact i found in effect three archives one's in a library two were sort of personal collections of cuttings and they'd been members of a like a in the 1960s and 70s there were quite a few ufo groups around britain and they were often quite keen scrapbookers and they would go and investigate sightings uh, and so there's some really good unpublished accounts in 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 from these three archives that go right back to 1909. Oh wow! You know, I mean, it's before the days odd things in the skies had had a proper name as a UFOs or UAP. Yeah. But these sightings, I mean, in 1909, it was what they called the scare ships or phantom zeppelins. Now these are the cigar shaped. Are, are they UFOs or are it, are the Germans on night flights? We know in 1915, yeah, it was the first Zeppelin air raid on Great Britain. But did their Zeppelins have that capability in 1909, the same year that Blerio flew the channel for the first time? So this is really quite early days of flight. Flight's not really, it's not properly 10 years old, really. So when PC Kettle is out on Cromwell Road in Peterborough. He walks around the corner as the sun's starting to come up and he can hear what he thinks is a car. And he looks up and there's a whacking great big Zeppelin above him. And he wow. goes off at quite some speed. Now, Zeppelins don't tend to go at great speed, but this item did. It's got a light at the front. Now, Zeppelins didn't that tend to have lights at the front. <coughs> it gets into the press because his sergeant didn't see it they wanted to know the truth of it but they hadn't thought that it was going to spread like wildfire way beyond peterborough and around the world that this sighting had taken place so the following week there's a retraction they get a police spokesman that says oh no no pc kettle remember he's an up he's a mature constable he knew his beat uh no no pc kettle was mistaken it was a kite with a Chinese lantern attached to it with a candle in it. Yeah, that really looks like a Zeppelin, doesn't it? <laughs> Fans weather balloons over Roswell, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's crazy. They tried to kill the story, but it wouldn't die. And when you look over that summer, when you look through May and June and July and August, people started reporting Zeppelins over the country, over East Anglia in particular. <coughs> and then later on, when we get towards after after June, there's even sightings up in Northumberland on the River Tyne. And they tried to dismiss those saying, oh, it was a test flight of a dirigible by a manufacturer on the Tyne. Well, you try and find me a dirigible manufacturer on the Tyne. In fact, it was months away before the first man was acknowledged to fly in Northumberland. Yeah. You know, these are not crazy people saying they're seeing these things. One of them, uh, when this shape, and it's the same shape 
this cigar shape with the light at the front was spotted over a place called Time Dock by a, 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 he was a master stevedore <laughs> and that man went on to become the Lord Mayor of Time Mouth so you know the, these are not silly people all of his crew all of the stevedore crew that were loading this ship in Time Dock they all saw it a tram driver on one of the late night trams people on the street they saw it and what was particularly odd over Jarrow Slate which is an area they were contemplating developing as a naval base up that way they said that the Zeppelin shot a red light down upon it and then darted now Zeppelins don't dart no and this thing dart it's described I mean I, I don't make it up or, or or change anything other than i quote the transcript there it is in the press wow. so something odd's going on and I, it just made me think because <coughs> one of the accounts of the rendlesham and they've got this strange ufo literally an unidentified flying object over the the storage facility where they had the nuclear warheads that too shone a red beam down just yeah. intriguing just intriguing. Yeah, a little if bit. You look into, if you look you into things like that, they, they, the UFOs seem to be quite interested in um, radio, um, nuclear uh, warheads and things like that. There's been um, um, video footage of allegedly one um, shooting down a, um, a rocket or something. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in uh, cryptozoology and uh, UFOs and... Um, good man ghosts ghosties and things like that and one thing that really interests me at the minute is skinwalker ranch where they're doing all these experiments yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's really scientific and i was reading um something on a web about skinwalker ranch i think it was um fugles um interview he said they found something but they can't release it to the public because the public will just freak out yeah but they're doing really kind of like real kind of like scientific uh, experiments yeah. And it does make you think, actually, has facts and fiction fused together and now it's so hard to pull them apart or, you know, when some they may have got um, a hold of some kind of um, fact of the public has, they have to kind of like um, suppress it, you know, erase I it. I quite agree. Yeah, so much, even down to those earliest reports, they've, they've been suppressed and it's a... <laughs> Yeah, it's sure. a nightmare not to go down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so my That's... book doesn't pretend to do too much of that. What it does is go back to the original reports and, and transcribe them, tell yeah. it exactly how it, is. Yeah. How it yeah. happened. And it's nice that it says there's Katie Forster there. Yeah. Rendlesham is a UFO hotspot. And ab absolutely right. I have visited there. With, with with my friend David Youngs and we we called in on Brenda Butler who's not far away from there and along with Dot Street and Jenny Randalls wrote really the first book uh on the Rendlesham incident where is Rendlesham I, I haven't heard of it Rendlesham is in Suffolk it's oh, okay. it's near the twin bases um RAF Woodbridge and Bentwaters and on the RAF Woodbridge base that's where they had the the nuclear storage facility and, it, and it's it's the woodbridge what they call the east gate the yeah. back gate that re, if you imagine you've got two airfields they're late built late in world war ii 1943 um they're raf but from 1951 they are signed over to the united states air force oh, okay so in effect you know that they're, they're fields of little america oh. the back gate of Woodbridge is known as the East Gate, and it's like a service road between the two. And that's where two guys were on duty. It was uh, it was Boxing Day, nineteen eighty, and you, you you know these are United States Air Force. They're they're police. They and they're because you know it's a time during the the Cold War. It's a time of you know there's fear. They're very very yeah, alert. Fear. Yeah. They're checking the lock on the back gate and they start seeing lights going on in the forest. Oh, right. That is a forest. I've heard about that. Yeah. 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 And they have to have permission to leave the base, really, because they're going on to what is, in effect, British soil, British police jurisdiction. And normally when they're on base, they're armed, but they had to hand all their weaponry in 
And oh, then okay. off they went into the forest to investigate. Um, the main men for that well, was, was John, John Burroughs. He, he was airman first class. And the sergeant was Jim Penniston. And there was also Ed Casabank. Um, he was kind of uh, Penniston's driver. Uh, but the, John Burroughs and Jim Penniston, they, they, they got up close. Mm -hmm. There's some remarkable stories from those two guys with, about that encounter. But they got, you know, what can you do? You you see this thing and then it goes, it disappears. It's surreal, isn't it? I think, yeah, that's it. Yeah, when you see when you when you see something unexplained and the question marks yeah. start popping top of your head, you know, you know, you've seen something that's kind of not yeah. normal or not of this world. You know, but whether what it be the a twist is, and you're like this that. Of course, the next day, there's the, the the camp is alive with what are these guys seeing? And there's all sorts of rumours going on, both the, both Bentwaters and Woodbridge. So the deputy base commander is Charles Holt. And I've been in touch with Charles. He, I can call him Chuck. I'm quite honoured about that. He's a lovely, lovely man, a true gentleman, retired full colonel, spot on, and. You imagine, you know, that's, that's, you know, the deputy base commander. Mm. He's, you know, he's got to try and make sure that all this rumour stuff, he's going to, he's going to quash it, right? Yeah, yeah. And you get, the next night, there's more light seen in the forest. Yeah, that's again, yeah. And the, the security guy, uh, Lieutenant England, has to go into the Christmas party for the officers. And, and the full-on base commander has to tell him and he deputizes lieutenant colonel charles holt to go and investigate wow and, and and he does and he sends over what they call light alls now light alls are used if there's an air crash at night these are used to these are more powerful than floodlights they will flood the area with light wow. and they go over to where they this alleged crash site was Lieutenant England takes him over there where, where, where Jim and John had seen the thing the night before and they're looking around the area and they tried to start the light oars. Now these have to be reliable. They have to be super checked. Job done. They won't play game. Dead. Oh, right. <laughs> so Colonel Holt's got to send back for more light horse. Now he'd spoken to, there's a kind of dis disaster response team. And the guy from there, they got him to bring over Geiger counters and his camera because the guy was actually a professional photographer. And they're using the Geiger counters, and this is incredible. And you can find it on the internet. You can hear Colonel Holt. He used a small dictaphone in his pocket so that as he went into the forest, he could describe what was going on and what his command decisions were. So rather than writing it all down, he as it was audible. this is one of the most compelling UFO sightings of all time because you could hear it by t you could hear the clicks on the Geiger counters. And then all of a sudden they see this red light passing through the forest and they say it winks almost like a big eye as it goes through the trees. Now people say, Oh, this is Orford Ness Lighthouse. Have you ever seen a lighthouse cast a red light for a start? No. <laughs> and you see it move through the trees and Colonel Holt and his team, they're all there. They follow it to the forest edge, across a farmer's field. This thing is so red, it lights up one of the farmer's cottages opposite there. They think the place might even be on fire because it's so red. They cross the field. They get up close to this very large orb. And when they're fairly close to it, it just bursts into pieces and white lights. Oh, wow. Now, okay. there's no aircraft on Earth that does that. No. There's no uh, Orford Lighthouse. Can't do that. And it's, no. it's, it's all recorded. It's there as it happened. And what's often forgotten after that bit, which is very, very dramatic, in the sky, other lights were seen. And in particular, one of, one of these shapes that came over was actually shining down beams of light. And some of them were very, very close. It's like a pencil beam of light. And they're very close to Colonel Holt's boot when one of those came down. Wow. Weird, weird, weird stuff. Weird stuff, yeah. 
That's interesting because um, I lived in Swindon for a little while, and people said Swindon's quite a good hotspot around that area. Yeah, um, and Stonehenge for aliens. Absolutely, you know, you you were right to talk about nuclear facilities. So this is not just weaponry, but this nuclear power stations, places like Sizewell. You know, right. they they've had quite a reputation. Electricity generating stations. So it does make you wonder if these are visiting aliens are they drawing some sort of power from the substations or can they sense that there's some sort of power being generated there and they go to investigate it to try or, and it? or is it more investigating how far have we advanced on our little primitive planet <laughs> yeah and that, that's mean, no joke we we just no, don't no. know no we don't no another and, hot and spot you're right the, another these hot could spot be too, very curious it? people you Another know? hot spot apparently is uh, Loch Ness up in Scotland. Apparently, quite a few UFO sites you've seen over I there as well. I love Loch Ness. I love. It's one of my favourites. It it's tidal. Favorites. I couldn't believe it had waves. Oh, I couldn't believe. Oh it yeah, it's quite so, yeah, yeah. There's a beach. Yeah. On is Loch that the monster going through the water that's causing <laughs> the wave? <laughs> well, it's, interesting. it's really, it really, really is. I mean, but, they but, say you know monsters can't exist, but my my. Um, my argument if you see the cats can exist from the prehistoric ages well, so yeah. you can see monsters and they were around the same time as the dinosaurs the sea and is they... a very deep thing and there are channels underneath them caves and all sorts yeah who knows what flows into loch ness but here's the thing swindon loch ness stonehenge they're all places that people go uh, if you're in a city that's your, your daily business, isn't it, right? Yeah. There's lots of people there, and we often do look up nowadays. Do you have a little look up? It's a population density. So there's a good chance people will see things. If you go to a historic place like Stonehenge, you're taking in the atmosphere, big, clear sky area, you look up. So maybe in sparsely populated areas, they see UFOs there too. It's just I think you'll see more UFOs in densely pop populated areas because there's more people to see them. So there's a couple of comments here yes. that, have, that have made made me chuckle. So the first one is, do you think that the aliens are here to help us? Yes. I, well, we don't know. We don't. We don't know what they are for a start. So are these ancient inhabitants there's an argument for for uh that they, they even come from under the sea yeah um yeah. or are these aliens are these into are, are they ourselves from other dimensions that can now travel back in time and look at us okay. Is it, are, are these interdimensional craft i think yeah. they're definitely interdimensional absolutely absolutely yeah. if you look at if you look at um skinwalker ranch there's a lot of kind of interdimensional worm kind of wormhole thing anomalies going in you know things suddenly coming into view into the sky then suddenly disappearing yeah uh, you know it's it's because it's all science i mean they're, they're not they're not stupid people you know they've got not, the, they've no. got their phds their doctors they've written books yes you know so it's you know when you look at the science of it it's, it's quite quite if you uh, watch the night sky and you'd be mindful if something behaves in an odd way if it's a shooting star they tend to go one way they are yeah. they? even if you see something move horizontally across the sky if it's not a plane it, and it's even satellites find satellites. that sort of move yeah. a bit tricky you see something horizontal if it's not an aircraft or a helicopter okay. and you're, it's intriguing and there are numerous accounts that i've found in these witness statements that talk of a star f coming down to earth and the and it's it's really odd um in the, not the one in jerusalem was it that thing yeah, well you, you don't and, know, you? Again. and that's not a, that's not a silly suggestion at all you just don't know in fact if you look on iconic images from right back to earliest depictions on, on on the walls of churches there are often some really odd things tucked away in those clouds 
that sure as sure as <laughs> anything they don't look like angels you know there's holes in the sky with beams coming out oh yeah 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 that's quite interesting so, uh, I'd, uh, my my ultimately and I'm, I'm fascinated with the paranormal and they're great stories so from my point of view i'm here to share those stories uh if i if it's a false thing i, I want to debunk it if i can but if they're just great stories i, I don't know do i want to solve everything no nah, that's it um, is it solving so, or understanding ah that very good yeah spot on chris yeah <laughs> well, i don't want to understand everything either i want some mystery yeah okay. yeah uh katie said aliens have been here for centuries but she now thinks most of them are leaving because of what we've done to the planet well i i like your point there there katie you said some good stuff tonight i think i think and talking to my friend annie Peron, and she's a very spiritual lady that has wonderful connection i think with with um people from other worlds or interdimension whatever it is i don't know but she seems to have this great affinity and she seems to think that that those that are amongst us and there and they will there's all sorts of things that go on in this world but she likes to think that they're there to save us to help us and yeah. some will flee but that's rather like people isn't it have you yeah. seen the abyss the director's cut no i haven't what happens oh have to, if you if you try and get hold of the director's cut of the abyss yeah um to, well it's not it's not really a spoiler but this this ties into about aliens um and i can't remember all of it but the general gist is um they kind of question and ask why they hadn't shown themselves and they i think they project something with the future of the like, tidal waves and things like that and say yeah. this is the reason why you're destroying your planet you know, and it, it's a quite an eye opener to, to, to be perfectly honest. It is good. It's very, very good if you can get hold of it, the abyss. Yeah. Well, I'll give that a whirl. Yeah. Yeah. The director's, but it has to be the director's cut. Cheryl King, um, one of our Tasmanian friends, she's been with us since the start. She asks, uh, do you believe in the paranormal? And if so, why? Thank you for that, Cheryl, and greetings to you. Um, yeah, I do believe in the paranormal because I've seen things that I can't explain. And I, I, my, I conducted my first proper ghost hunt when I was at college in 1988. Um, and I've told this story a few times, but I mean, that, that was bonkers. It was a very ordinary terraced house in Great Yarmouth. And we'd been in there all night. We'd got a very big clunky old uh, video cassette uh, camera. You know, you put a brick in the side of it, clunk, yep. <laughs> and we got nothing on it. But what was weird that everything cut out during the night, and everything we, we had an electronic thermometer thing and the video camera, everything cut out. It went very, very cold. There's a video player in the lounge because it was someone's home, and the and we could still see through the lounge and the diner. Through to the kitchen, you know, you know how terrorist houses work because you kind of have your, your lounge, diner, and then yeah. you have the kitchen and bathroom, bom, 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 all the way up. We could see that when all of our stuff had cut out, that the fridge was still, and hear it, you could hear it buzzing away and the light was on. Interesting. So we thought, well, maybe it's, it's a fuse box issue or something. But no, what was weird was that the electric came on slowly, on, and they didn't have a dimmer switch. It was like somebody just turned it back on again. Oh, I haven't weird. really seen that happen before. Spooky. Anyhow, we were there until the morning and we were clearing out our clunky equipment. We shut the door, bang, like that, on the on the Yale lock. And inside the house, we heard, boom, what's that? What could it be? So my mate went upstairs, we got went back in, he went upstairs and I went into the lounge where we'd been. And the girls had worked in costume and textile and they were makeup artists, you know, they, they, they were at college doing that. And I went into that room and cool, it felt like there was a row going on in there. There was nobody in there, but you, oh dear, the, the atmosphere was dreadful. We thought the dressmaker's dummy that they used for make, making the dresses on, we thought that had fallen over for some reason, but no, that still stood there. I thought, what on earth is that? So I 
I was going to go out again. And for some reason, it's got one of those cheap sort of wooden panels with fibre in between doors, you know? You yeah. know, that sort of thing. And and they let, they often, they're flat against the wall. And I thought, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to look. I don't know why. I just looked behind it. Now, remember, we've been sat in that room all night. When I pulled the door like that and I looked behind it, remember, that's the door I'd opened. Yeah. Behind it was a pair of dressmaking scissors like that. Bang. <laughs> With even the point through the door. Wow. <clears throat> so that is Maybe. what I, I said. Yeah, okay. Do you know? Yeah, the paranormal <laughs> does exist. <laughs> yeah. That's no messing, I believe. And the weird thing was when I was working in, in Yarmouth Museum, we did in those days you did sort of very basic photocopying and overlaying. We did an exhibition about the monasteries of Yarmouth. And I, it just came into my mind. I thought, I wonder. And they, they were the old man, old medieval monasteries. And we looked at where this terrace street was, where we'd done the investigation. And blow me, it was over a monastic graveyard. Oh, wow. You know, the girls had said they'd seen things in there. And that's why they wanted us to investigate. No wonder. They'd seen a cowled figure. In the deck, in the I think it was in the downstairs with her and her boyfriend, and they were being close, you know. And you had the curtains drawn downstairs, but you had in those days orange street lights, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she kind of looked around, this thing, she could sense something watching her, looking at it, and she looked and blow me, there's something standing there, Gee. So, yeah. Uh, I have yeah. a question from Lee. Um, and she says, uh, have you heard of the die fed enigma? Oh, yeah. So what's your thoughts on it? Now, the one that I know of, um, this is a, a, in Wales and it's, it's a kind of triangle of, uh, places where there was UFO activity in the 1970s. And what happened there that there's kids were out playing. Uh, in in the in the school yard, and apparently there was like a meadow behind there, and a UFO came down. The kids saw it, and the kids ran in, and they wanted to get the headmaster to come and look at it, and the headmaster wouldn't come, uh, and the, and he thought the kids were just, you know kids are, they're, they're little kids. It's a junior school or a primary, but the kids swore they'd seen this thing, so he said okay. If you really did see this, let's put you kids in this room, this room, this room. So they couldn't really compare. And he got them to draw what they saw. And, you know, kids' drawings do vary a bit, but there's a lot of similarity there. So that was, that's quite an intriguing, yeah, out, out in Wales. Penturk, I think, is absolutely incredible. That's a, a, a not that long ago. Uh, that's a Welsh incident where, uh, oh, it, it, some weird triangular shaped craft uh, with uh, that was given off uh, like ele electrical uh, beams coming underneath it was spotted by Kaz Clark and her neighbour. Um, really nice people, honest, you know, and this is just off the scale. They'd seen military aircraft in the sky. And this thing is massive. Wow. And something had come down that night. They're seeing conifer trees that have been in a, in a nearby forest that have been broken off at a certain height. Was that in the nineties? Was it? Yeah, that one. This one, I think, is in the two thousands. So, because yeah. I have I have heard about some gigantic um, triangular kind of aircraft which was shooting. Oh, tri the triangles! Ice. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they they jokingly in the north they're, they're known as the Dudley Dorito. Oh, right. <laughs> a few of them. But over the years, yeah, I mean, the, this one Kaz saw, it looks like a, a, almost like a pyramid upside down. Uh -huh. The triangular sh shaped craft, they're very much, yeah, like you imagine a crispy Dorito, but in a very, very big black uh, UFO with lights at the corners of it, sometimes with a red yeah. light in the centre. And so many people have seen that over the north of England. You think, hmm, there's got to be something in that. Uh, we have another question from Katie. 
Uh, and there's some great comments, like everybody. Like Thank you very much for those as well. Spot on. Do you believe in reincarnation? Oh, I could make a really rubbish joke about that, but I won't. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll be respectful. Uh, do you know what? I hope so. Um, I can't prove it. I don't know, but I, I hope so. I'd love to come back as a as a seagull and poo on some people. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, wouldn't that be nice? I mean, I, I love dogs and I like cats. And if you come back as a dog or a cat in a loving home, hey, that's not going to be too bad, is it? No, that. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like the message that you have at the start of your shop just be kind, you know? Yeah. Shouldn't be that difficult. Oh, well, unfortunately, it is for a lot of people. It, yeah, but, definitely yeah, a paranormal it world. Bonkers to me that people, yeah. do you like being kind? Be kind. Hey, you know. You like it? Do it. Because I tell you what, being kind does a lot more good for you than being nasty. A really good friend of mine, Martin Fultz, very spiritual man, follows the ninja path. Lovely, lovely fellow. And he once said to me, he said, what's in you will surround you. And I thought, hey, I like that. I also like the one where he said that you get a lot further with honey on your tongue than vinegar. And I like that. Uh, okay. And let's face it, honey on the tongue, it's Valentine's night. Anything could happen, boys and girls. Oh, wow. Well, that's, 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 that's the end of the live stream. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know? Chris is off to get the honey and to find Tracy. Absolutely. I'm not salad cream. Right. Oh, and thank you, everybody, for those lovely, kind comments. You know, we've got smileys, we've got a little laugh. Yeah, everyone's uh, everyone's enjoying what you're doing now. <laughs> Tracy's off. She's um, off now. Yeah. We have another. Uh, what do you think about the alien incident reported in Livingston, Ooh, yeah. Scotland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is a this is Bob. He's a he's a, a forestry worker in the nineteen seven. I think nineteen seventies. Think so. Or Bob's an the alien then. <laughs> And he, he, you imagine this, he, he's, he's an ex-World War II, uh, in certain tanks, you know, really down to earth, forestry worker, right? You know, he does his, you know, checks fences, really a man, knows nature, married for years, you know, got a lovely Irish set of dog, and he's off to work. He's got to check some fences, make sure things are, racks up, you know, he's, he's wa wa walking through the forest, and there's this UFO that looks like a sort of metal version of the planet Saturn. It's not as big as Saturn, but you get the idea. This thing yeah. is about 30 foot high, it's a whacking great thing, with little prongs all around it, with little rotors on it. But, but he's not going to make that up. I mean, that's not even a standard UFO. He, this poor guy has seen it. And, and, and as he's looking at this, no kidding, right, as he's trying to take in what he's seeing there, two things that he described like a sea mine, or if you imagine like circles with all those prongs coming out, and the things come rolling towards him very, very quickly. And he smells this kind of weird like brake fluid or burning tyres or whatever, something like quite acrid. And he can feel the things have latched on his, the side of his trousers, his legs, they've torn his trousers. And he's being dragged along and he's got to fight for all and he blacks out. But something must have went that he didn't get dragged onto this thing. And he comes to and his Irish set is nearby and he, and he, he he's, he's been terrified. So what he does is he, he, he tries to get back to his pickup truck and he does. He's still and he's got to crawl half the way. Very, very disorientated. He managed to get into the driver's seat and he tries to use his radio. And he does connect, but he can't speak. He's lost the ability to speak. Now, it could have been terror. Or what was this acrid smell that was yeah. taking over him? So and he, he, what's he going to do? Well, he thinks, well, I'm going to try and drive back. And the thing is, he messes up the gears and he ends up in a ditch. You know, the, the bloke's just had something be off the scale happen to him. So he walks home. He walks home and his wife sees him coming up the drive, deathly pale. His trousers are torn. Underneath, he's wearing long johns. They're torn as well. 
And she said, are you all right? You've had an accident. Has somebody attacked you? Attacked you? Yeah, I've been attacked by aliens. Wow. <laughs> Can you, seriously. She thought he was a crank. Well, his wife thinks, well, what's that? Has he fallen out of his truck and hit his head or something? Yeah. So he called the doctor, and yes, he's got abrasions on his legs. The, the clothes are torn. His boss comes over and wonders what on earth's going on. And, and they call the police. And when the police go over, all I mean, you know, when Bob came too, everything had gone, all the, all the strange, stickly mind uh, aliens and the, and the space. It's all gone. He did a swooshing sound. It's gone. But when the police get there, there's marks on the ground where, you know, if you have an object that's very heavy, and it sits on the ground. It takes a certain amount of pressure to leave a mark, doesn't it? And there were marks yeah. left there. So Even there's marks where, the, where, the, where these kind of sea mine things that rolled along had, had come around him. And you could even see marks on the ground where Bob's boots had been dragged along the ground. So JD just said um, that the patch of land where it happened has never regained a growth of grass. Wow. Well. I know that they put a little memorial up to it, to this incident. I'm, I'm really glad that people have shared it because, it, you know, if you look up on the, on the YouTube, you can see Bob talking about it. Yeah. See it for real. There he is, dear old boy. How can you explain it? We just, it's, it, it's truly <laughs> unexplained. Yeah. You know, and, the, and he's, everybody that's ever met him, you know, some really serious UFO investigators have met him. You know, he's as honest as the day is long. It's just a, it, it happened to him. And his story never changed. He never enlarged it. He wasn't even into UFOs. You know, he's just a guy. Just a normal everyday <laughs> guy, yeah. yeah. Mm. So tell us about your uh, your filming with young Sam and Colby. Oh, God, that's fun. <laughs> it's, about, it's about a year ago. Uh, it, they're... they're got a lovely um producer guy got in touch and they wanted to film some locations in england and they said where would you recommend i think dave schrader had recommended me and they said, if, you, if you want somebody in england you've got to talk to neil's story <laughs> He's going to do it. that's a very good dave that I is dave. <laughs> My uh and so I said, well, how about, because I spend a lot of time in Northumberland, I love it up here, um, let's go to Chillingham. They're a nice team there. They they welcome ghost hunters, which is yeah. great. And, and it is a genuine haunted castle, not something that's been made up for tourists. This has been recorded back hundreds of years. And I thought, yeah, let, let's get these guys in there and, and let's do Chillingham. It was absolutely, it was a good, very dark night. The weird thing was, it was the only night that winter it snowed. Wow. It, when we drove back, I drove back very, very early hours of the morning, and it looked like Battlestar Galactica going yeah. through <laughs> all the snow. It, cool, that was a bit chilly, willy, a bit scary. Uh, but what a night! What a night with Sam and Colby. We we dismissed this um, John Sage Dragfoot story, which is it, it, there's no historical basis for it. But I said there's something about this because people found it on Ouija boards, um, pendulum, whatever they're doing or mediums have picked up on this character. And I'm, I think he's a construct. In other words, a lot of people have wanted something to happen there. And I think there's a dark spirit, modern, modern world, you know, the medieval world labeled them demons. It's a dark force that's latched onto that. It, it, that dark force will give people what they want but in exchange for what? Yeah. So okay. I, I, I said, guys, I said, yeah, be careful with this entity because Dragfoot doesn't, you know, he was supposedly, this backstory, John Sage has been wounded in action, which meant that he can't walk properly. He has to drag one foot along with him. You could hear it in the corridor. Absolute guff. But it's, it's funny. In America... You know the Slender Man. Yeah. The Slender Man. Enough people believe in the Slender Man that they start to see it. And in fact, it seems to manifest. Maybe there is something more to this power of the mind that if enough people really want something, will it manifest? Yeah, there is there is um 
some scientific background about that, isn't there? And if there's a lot of if a people, if there's a, a mass of people in the same spot, or looking, find trying to find the same thing, yeah, they can actually make it appear. Yeah. So whether that, whether that's happening in Loch Ness or you know UFOs or something in the clouds, if they all say, "Look, that looks like something," I go, "Oh yeah, so it does kind of yeah. thing." I, I mean, know? I've seen video or you know camera phone footage of Slenderman. And I have to say, I've seen some really odd stuff. I, I, it's in, a, in South America or some of these. They look like a pair of fingers, and there's a group of them that walk across a field. Oh, wow. Disembodied. They're, they're weird. They're called walkers. Look out for walkers. It's, it's really bonkers. So are these aliens? Are they a manifestation of, some, of the paranormal in some way? They certainly don't look like a ghost. Or is it something yeah. humans have created, and that's the the physic the um the physics or whatever the electricity of yeah. your mind has created? You're um, right, Chris. These things. It could be. The trouble is, you see, science doesn't always want to study the paranormal. It's seen as a pseudo subject. Yeah, and I think it's it's rather foolish. Um, just as a ah, there we are. Blue sky, Alyssa has seen those walkers. They're really freaky. So check them Free. out. They look like fingers. fingers yeah, walking. they're almost like white fingers, or, or like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Very and tall, very tall, skinny people. people as well. That's the, there's the slender man. There's some really weird stuff going on out there. That's bonkers. And it's in not, America. It's there's not lots of weird manifestations. We would know it. They're not ghosts. But no. I'll tell you something that I find interesting. <laughs> in all these years of paranormal research, this is with TV companies and independently. <clears throat> Even with digital cameras now, and back in the day when we, we were using video camera, you'd always have a monitor. So the cameras are with the cameramen or women, and you have a monitor at your control set. As I'm normally sat next to a director, you know, and sometimes, and this includes lock off cameras, also, you will see some. I've seen just about full body manifestation and I'm, I'm talking about it's not solid this person is see-through this is not a reflection this is something it, i suspect it's probably a replay rather than a conscious ghost it looks like a replay they're the standard ones and they're not always in very very old clothing either but i've seen them on these monitors and we've got really really excited with it right there it is boom that's, that's like gonna, the, uh... that's gonna sit everything alight do you like the um the, the stone bit, tape theory well I'll, I'll come on to that in a minute chris but the point <laughs> is when you play it back now remember the camera's seen it yeah we've seen it you play it back and it hasn't recorded so how does that work mm. how does that work yeah, and I bet there are people maybe watching this show now, or people who will, and they'll know it. And we all feel we all feel we, we're going bonkers because we've captured it. I've even done it. I've seen it on on a digital camera. You know where they have the small camera, you know, just a little handheld Pentax or Lumix or something. I've seen it. I've seen it. And when we did a ghost night on the North Norfolk Railway about five years ago. And you could see this thing on a on a bridge where there'd been a number of suicides over the years that had been removed to the Heritage Railway. There was something that it was dark. You know, it, it's ten o'clock at night. There's something moving on that bridge. It was an official event, all locked off, nothing there. But when you tried to play it back, weird, crazy. Now, Chris, stone tape theory. I'm with you, brother. And now, this is an interesting thing that dates back to the 1970s. It does, yeah. <clears throat> and I think it actually began as a TV play or a film. Yeah, I think it, yeah, I think it started as a, a, a play, and then the BBC did a, like a, and that's yeah, what's most famous yeah, for the film, yeah. yeah. What are you for today? That's right, yeah. Yeah? And the idea was that stones and surroundings, if there's like a, so there's a murder in a room or something, or something happens regularly, or, or if people have been held prisoner in there, or something like that, or died in there, they can leave a trace on the wall. It could be a trace of misery. It could be a smell, and make you know, you'll have a laugh at phantom smells. 
I mean, you know, if you really do see a demon, they, there's a reason why you smell sulfur and it isn't coming from that demon. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the point is there are ghost smells. If you go to historic properties, you might just smell lavender. And not every National Trust property uses lavender wax and sprays and stuff. Oh, wow. Most not tobacco smoke. Mm. And these are just as ghostly as a headless horseman. So be aware. Um, Dover Castle. I was in a particular area there once, and uh, God, it's the stench. And I thought, God, well, well, uh, and it turned out that that was like a midden area, centuries back. But the smell was just powerful. Oh, dreadful. So you never know quite how things are going to manifest but the, the stone tape theory is that it's contained in those walls and if the atmosphere is right it's like a transistor you'll tune in and you might just see a replay a smell feel a sensation but something will replay wow i think i think that's what a lot of things are um, yeah. especially in castles they're, they're replays it's just it's, it's just being there at the right time the right conditions and you know, and it will just—it's just like a loop, a tape loop. It'll just play the same thing over right. again. And it won't—it won't move anywhere. It won't come towards you. It yeah. will just stay on that same trajectory where somebody's been walking or somebody's died, and you'll—you'll you'll just catch it that at that moment. I you know, think everybody you, is born with a gift. Um, I think you are when you're younger, but I think when you get older, you lose it. It depends. It. I, I don't consider myself gifted in any desperately strong paranormal way. Uh, the female line of my granny's family uh, certainly uh, had that gift right through their lives. Um, it's a tricky thing. I think you can you can learn how to encourage it a bit more, yeah. you yeah. know, and, and channel. Uh, I don't think it gets kicked out of you, but. I think everybody, and I, I'd really love to get this message out there, is that I believe everybody, if you've got an open mind to the paranormal, don't, I'd say, look, don't give up on your electronics. Of course, we want to try and find that evidence, but try and keep your baselines pure. If you don't already do it, get into the place and you just sit in the room quietly as a group of you and get used to hearing the creaks and groans of an old building. Here, if there is a sudden snap or a door and, or whatever, and maybe you won't jump out of the old skin too much if you get more familiar with the sounds of an old house yeah. and feel. If you go in with the electronics from first of all, you're not, you're, it's like not exercising. If you don't exercise muscle, you'll, you'll lose that power of that muscle. You have to use I think that's that you've got. part of your skills. Don't just rely on electronics. Sense. See how you feel. Don't, say, don't just tell me, oh, I'm frightened by everything. Well, don't bother then. Go and have a pot noodle or something. <laughs> Chill. Learn how to feel temperature drops. Learn how a building feels and sense the paranormal around you. doesn't mean your mind starts going and seeing things. It means that your mind is learning to filter out Bit more, bit more, fill up a bit more of the fear and get a little bit more in tune with your surroundings. Then you can bring in all your electronics and all sorts, but keep your baselines pure. Not to mention, <coughs> don't forget, if you're going in with all these spirit boxes and, and stuff, for goodness sake, tell the spirits what you're doing. Yeah. Because if the spirit's 200 years old, you've got a box with a flashing light with a voice coming out of it. It's witchcraft. <laughs> So we've got a uh, blue sky has said, I wondered about doppel doppelgangers. Are people simply seeing a playback of some emotional time a person they know went through? That's a very different area altogether. Um, doppel they say everybody's got a look alike, haven't they? And I've met yeah, people before, double, yeah. but look alike in town. They keep thinking they're seeing me. Chrissy's look alike comes out on Christmas Eve. Hey. Hey. Yeah. I, I thought of my good friend Kate Hairgirl Ray. 
Uh, do you know lovely Kate and she researches gnomes? No. Oh, no. A wonderful book called Woolly Snots, which has got a picture of Chris on the cover. It's oh, really good. My, my name's now going to be known as Woolly Snot, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm lying <laughs> that. Um, so, you, you've got uh, it. She's normally at one of the, the power cons or festival. Kate's really nice. She's a good soul in this world, you know, and, and she loves these the stories of gnomes and little people. And I, I, hopefully I won't bump into her because she'll just say, I've just met a six foot gnome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She will want you to come and sit on her mushroom in her back. On a mushroom. I can, yeah. I can just see it now. Rob, don't get any ideas. I'm not not gonna gonna <laughs> um, so we've good. had Lee, Lee's put this. It's in two, it's in three parts. So I'll put up the first part. Um, had an experience in 2009 when I was the delivery driver for a cab shop. I was out doing a delivery and I was on the back road and driving past four houses. There was a wooden fence to my right. Then it goes on to say right side. So right side and a man walked out of the middle of the fence. I slammed on my brakes, but I hit him and went over the top of him. And then she put, I got out of my car, went round the back to check on him and no one was there, but I felt my wheels bump over him. Wow. That's pretty... Uh, That's a little bit disturbing, isn't it? That is slightly, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that is the reason why ghost hunters do not wear white trousers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very yeah. true. You need to think about that one, folks. Do think about the things that you wear. Yeah, black is the colour. You know? But what's interesting about that, and thank you for sharing that story of a figure that came through a fence. These figures that walk out on roads are known uh there's one in ingham in particular in norfolk and i i've been in a pub the ingham swan <laughs> years ago now before the days of mobile phones and some guy came in that pub he had the look of death on his face he was he was absolutely it was a it was a misty old night out there he was terrified and he saw the landlord and he said, can I use your phone, please? I need to, I, I think I might have killed somebody. And the landlord just looked at him and said, you just tell me about what's happened. And apparently he was driving up the road between Stalham and Ingham in Norfolk through the mist and suddenly he saw this old boy. It was before he realised what had happened, he ploughed into him. And, and the landlord, who I knew very well, I was there at the bar, he, he said, did you hear a thump? No. He said, did you see him go through your bonnet? And the man thought for a minute. He said, oh, Christ. Wow. <laughs> and he actually saw, he, he could then see that the, the figure was halfway through his bonnet and he thought he was going to contact him and shut his eyes. Jeez. And man. it's known. It's known in that area between Stalin and the Ingham Swan. Wow. And it's an old boy kind of cowled up in a grey cloak. So JD says she's experienced what I believe was a stone tape theory experience, was living in a really old bungalow that was once an old apple orchard storage, and I 100% heard an old horse and car yeah. down yep. my driveway. Yep, very happy with that. Yeah, replays. Replays are known, and I think they're far more common than, than are, are, are given credit for. I really do. Same way people talk about haunted railroads. I've heard about lifeboat houses, and they think that the lifeboat has been launched, but it doesn't hit the water. And they kind of go dashing in, and the lifeboat's still in its fastening at the top of a pier. Wow. Yeah. Crazy, isn't so it? Chris's new name is making the rounds now. Woolly Snots. Woolly Snots. Yeah. Woolly. Uh, Woolly Snots. That's it. Yeah. Hey, Tracy's going to have to get you a big mushroom to sit on. Hey, yeah. I'm liking I'm that. very busy the next couple of days, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. Reach out to Kate. She'll, she can even sell you little pointed ears as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's no, probably got them under his hat because we <laughs> never see his ears. <laughs> I'm not a Vulcan, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, that's, uh, that's it's been pretty cool. It's been that's a great... A great insight to your to your life. So you're back at the festival this year, aren't I you? I certainly am. With we've got all the gang reunited from the holes of files. Okay, yeah, that should be good fun. 
Yeah, so that's Big Dave Schrader. Got yeah. Shane, who I want to send down into a cellar and see if uh, he how long he can keep his white trousers on. Yeah, <laughs> and the wonderful Cindy Kayser. Yeah, right. Cindy's good. She was on Nando's show a couple of weeks ago. He, he got he, he got Cindy. Yeah, he, has he spoken to her personally before? I have. I, I feel he, utterly he betrayed now, Cindy. Cindy. <laughs> Bless, yeah. that's it. If, if Patty can reach out to me, and you know who Patty is, don't you? oh yeah, Patty was brilliant. I yeah. loved having Patty. All, all I'm saying, Cindy Kayser, is you better be a good dancer. Yeah. So because when, when I'm busting some moves at the festival, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you better be there, lady. I, I will vouch for Neil's moves at the festival. They were very good. <laughs> they were very good. <laughs> so we when we had Patty on, we had someone in the chat named Zach Bagans. And we were all taking the mick out of him and going, it's not really Zach Bagans, blah, blah, yeah. blah. But having spoken to Patty since, it actually was Zach in the oh, chat. Man. Yes, he wow. was making sure that she wasn't going to drop any hints or anything as to what was coming up next. Oh, the yes. answer some wow. questions that she put to him. Yes, because she's been on Ghost Adventures, hasn't she? Yeah, she, yeah. she's yeah. now More than one. with him again. So... We yeah, they're very friends. close friends. Her and her and Zach are very good friends. So, and why not? You know, I I, I believe in power unity. You know, yeah. be kind, get on, speak as you find. That's it. You know? That's it. So I think we got one more thing from Lee. Apart from that, she shat herself and didn't drive for three weeks. She's uh, I'm liking that. Yeah, well, you got to get the car cleaned, haven't you? Really get the smell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> on the old hanging grounds of an old courthouse and they used to use my house to store dead bodies we have a lot of strange activity that goes on all around the farm yeah uh, it, this stuff can happen haunted places you know and they and it could even be an, a fairly modern house but it's built on somewhere where there's an older building or a bit of history on the ground the blood in the ground uh, the ley lines or something like that absolutely Absolutely right. Oh, yeah, stranger things on this earth, you know. But it's just, good fun. You just never know, you, you know. Just, just before you get transported by a UFO, Neil. No. Uh, where's been? Where, where's been? Where you've uh, been the most uncomfortable place to visit? That's well, really kind of now this is intriguing. When we do the festival of the unexplained, we tend to put a tour around. So when Dave Schrader and I do our sort of great UK tour with mysterious adventure tours and we kind of start in the north so we'll probably go Chillingham, Whitby, Festival of the Unexplained then we'll head down. Now all right we're going to do Stonehenge, going to be a bit of London but I tell you Hellfire Caves. I'd love to go there. What, is it in London? What, the one in London or the one in the It's island? just outside London. It's a chalk cave. It was Francis Dashwood who was the kind of creator, really, or, or, or one of the top men in the Hellfire Club. A weird practice went down there. Yeah, I mean, I've heard a lot of things going about that place. They were yeah. opening doors because they'd messed oh, around with yeah. it. Yeah, there's you a know? lot of um, door open filling around with things they didn't know, isn't there? Yeah. Spot on. And when you get amongst those caves, if you tried to run out there, you'd get lost. Yeah. We had some of our gifted ladies from the paranormal group saw white it's not an orb it's like it's like a moving white light they saw it two of the other ladies captured it i couldn't see a thing oh, wow. but it's moving around um there's a thing there's a photograph of me and dave Schrader, and there's something passing kind of in front of us before they you know like it was a publicity shot it looked great but whatever this the the odd shot before that has got on it we don't know EVP, Dave carried his, he's got a little recorder. And the, we, were, we were getting kids down there on the EVP yeah. that, that were quite frightened. So Lord knows what happened down there all those years ago. Mm, I'm going to have to visit it, <laughs> take a day trip down there. <laughs> Julie, Julie says, what an interesting guy you are. She could natter to you for hours. Oh, bless your heart. Well, do you know, I think it's been lovely to spend Valentine's night some very special people here definitely definitely and i i have spoken to you when we were at the festival and it you was did. uh someone's just just asking if i could kidnap you that, maybe not put that over uh, uh, is, is he single is he single okay <laughs> want me 
<laughs> I'm a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it, you want to see the dad dancing. That's all I've got to say. Yeah, Neil's dad, dad dancing. Yeah. Right. Dance <laughs> off now, Rob. Dance off. Yes, yes, not with me, you and Nando. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's been it's been great catching up with you again. And uh, you too, Rob and Chris. Lovely to chat with you, my Yeah, friend. it's nice to nice to meet you now. Yeah, I was a bit concerned when um he said historians that I was going to talk about World War Two and soldiers, oh, but actually it's been brilliant. I've really, really enjoyed it. So thank you very much, Neil. Bless your heart. And, uh, what we do, we're um we'll get you back on um in the future with Lando and make sure he's here as well. Yeah. Um, well, I don't blame him. You know, it, Sarah's a very nice lady. She's got a nice smile. She's very kind. She has, yeah. You know, I mean, she, I mean, she's really benevolent going out with Nando and marrying him, you know. I mean, she, that's really she a bloody thing, medal. Yeah. That's what she needs, the medal. <laughs> so. Love you too, Sarah <laughs> and Nando. Big but, yeah, uh, thank you very much, Neil. It's been a pleasure having you. It's a pleasure. Thanks, everybody. And good Cheers. night. Thank you. Bye -bye. I, uh, I'll let you go off, Neil, all right? Thanks, gang. Good to see yeah. you. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Bye-bye. What a lovely man. That was brilliant, that was. I really, really enjoyed that. I don't know why the link didn't come across. No, that's why I started. It just doesn't help. You have to excuse me if I start pesting you because it doesn't help. My, I had a couple of bad anxiety uh, early, yesterday. Um, and if, if I'm not contact you straight away i'll start crawling up the walls and doing an exorcist impression nice. um, so you just have to leave me and just get try and get i i have to learn that even though i don't work or anything people other people do have other things to do rather than get back to me <laughs> so i'm still trying to get to get to um you know be not quite so um of the pain in the backside but um yeah they they they, they didn't come through at all or anything so i don't i don't know why that's right. Yeah. When Tracy sent me the message, it was like she was saying, please, Rob, just give him the fucking link because I don't want him to talk to him anymore. So just get him on your show. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. She had enough of talking to me for all day. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I, yeah. So as far as I was concerned, I'd already sent it. So that's why I sent it again. So. No, just yeah, no. Neil, Neil is a very interesting. Uh, he is, yeah. <laughs> there we go. There's the laugh, everyone. Um, I met him obviously at the Festival of the Unexplained with Nando and Sarah with Danny Moss. And Danny was trying to be the big I am and get everyone drunk, but Neil yeah. literally destroyed him. Really? Because, yeah, he got him completely mullered. So the next day, Danny was useless. He couldn't do anything. He he left early. He had to go and film later on that evening. And yeah, he was hanging out of his bottom, bless him. <laughs> um but it was uh it was a it was a great weekend away and it was really enjoyable meeting like Dave Schrider and all that lot. So he's someone else that we're gonna try and get on the show. Oh that'd be amazing, that would. Um so I'm gonna try and get Dave and obviously Rob Thompson as well. But yeah, it was interesting to find out about it was actually really Zach that was in the chat that night. That's amazing, that is wow. Because as some of the, the girls are saying, we were kind of like taking the piss out of him a little bit. A little bit, yeah, there's a little bit going on. But I'm sure he's used to that. He's got a big enough ego to handle that. Could you imagine if Parple or Beardo was in the oh, chat? Oh, it, 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 it would be, it would just destroy him. It would be, you know. It would have <laughs> been carnage. Absolute carnage, absolutely, yeah. It would be a bloodbath. <laughs> So, um, Cheryl, I will find out if Neil has his own channel, and if he has, I will put the link up for you. Let me have a look on my phone now. Um, I know he's been on a lot of other shows, um, so it might be that um, I know he has Facebook, which he's always happy to add people onto Facebook. He seems, very, he seems very sociable. He seems, you know, he'll, if you've got a good question or something, he'll get he'll he'll get back to you. So he, I don't think he has his own. No, he doesn't have his own show. But if you search him on uh, Netflix, he's been on lots of uh, different podcasts talking about. <clears throat> different things he's been on ghost squad 
Um, yeah, he's been on lots of stuff. But I will... Um, I will send over... I will put whatever links I can onto the channel page. Um, but yeah, I, I would recommend, if anyone can, if you can get a copy of this, um, it's sold out within... A matter of weeks of him releasing it. Um, wow. I think there's a few more that have been made available on um, uh, that, 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 um, Amazon at the moment. Um, but it is a very good read. And is it? A, is it, the, is it a, um, the history of? Um, yes. Uh, so it's Bram Stoker, author of Dracula, an illustrated biography by Neil Story. Um, and that is that is very good. Have you read it? I'm halfway through, and it is uh, it is uh, how many pages? Da -da -da, 340 pages. Wow, was Bram Stoker Irish or Scottish? I can't remember now. Uh, ba -ba -ba. It's got things in, in the book. It's got stuff about um, illustrations that were unpublished. Um, some drawings of Bram and his wife. Um, all original research. Unpublished letters from Bram Stoker to other people. I'm not sure if this is right or not. I'm sure Bram Stoker was part of a paranormal society or something in back in the day I know he was into his gothic uh, let's have a look uh, Bram Stoker da -da. <clears throat> yeah it doesn't yeah, I'd have to go back to the very beginning and start again. Right. Um, that's a great idea. Could do a book share club and save the trees. I have lots of uh, books from people that I've met. Um, I met Penny Morgan. If anyone knows Penny Morgan, what the news? Um, the newscaster. No, <laughs> she wrote a book on the elements of Epping Forest. Oh. Um, and she's also the historian for where the um, Bosworth Hall, which is where they hold the Festival of, of the Unexplained. I was going to ask you where, where is it held? Bosworth. Yeah, it's expensive. It's oh, is not it? a cheap thing to go to. Um, oh, it cost oh. me 100 and, 120 quid. That included my room for the night as well. That's not bad. But that was one night. Nando, oh, right. I think Nando was 200-odd for, like, three nights. So, wow. But it is worth it. If you like the paranormal and you like meeting interesting people, that's the place to go. Are you, go are you going this year? Uh, I'm not, but Nando is. I was going, but I've had other things, obviously, on the go with, like, the Boy Wonder. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, is going a bit weird again. So, mm. um but um, so I, I decided that this year I wouldn't. I want to go away to America this year. Are you going, or just you're just thinking about it? Um, I may go over and see my friends in America, so I'd, I'd only have to pay for flights. Oh, that's that's really useful. That is. Yeah, so I'm thinking I might do that. I I just think I might take some time time away from myself. Right. Um, yeah. Because I haven't been on holiday for a, a while, so. Uh, but then again, I might go back to Tunisia because I love it out there. Where again? Tunisia. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, I the first time I went to Tunisia, I got shot at. Nice, well done. By the, uh, <laughs> by the terrorists when they came on the beaches and were shooting at the hotels. Really? I was on. I was on the beach on that day. Um, so and then the UK, the members of the UK and um, America were not allowed to go back for five years because they deemed it too unsafe for us mm. to go back. 
So the first year that we were allowed back, I went back and there was a massive memorial outside the hotel that still has bullets in it. The hotel's closed. It's never reopened. There's still blood um, everywhere, like in, inside where people were shot um, because it, they literally shut it down. But it literally, like, they have a memorial out the front on the beach now um, that every year they, uh, at the time of the shooting, they light candles and all the floaty things in the air and that and it's really nice it's a nice way of remembering those that weren't quick enough to get off the beach and it was pretty scary because these well, yeah. just appeared from nowhere yeah uh, pff, yeah no. i'd be okay because i'll just take my inflatable mushroom and sit on that and everything no, you should. <laughs> no. thing is i've cheated death so many times now that eventually that man with the sigh is going to come behind me and be like right it is your turn now prick because the first time I went to America, my flight got delayed, um, my connecting flight, and that connecting flight ended up outside the Pentagon. Pretty hell. <laughs> so I'm like, and then I had a heart attack, and I died for seven minutes. And, uh, yeah, so that's three times. I can't have much more left in me. Oh, I don't know. You're doing well so far. <clears throat> It's, it's it's all right. I'm yeah. I'm plodding on. It's fine. And the last uh, time I had, um, I think it was last. Was it last Boxing Day? Try last Christmas. I had to see. I had a seizure. Yeah. Um, uh, I suffer from a non non epileptic seizures, and uh, I just I can just remember I was having a seizure and Tracy coming over, um, and I just went kind of. Ugh. And she called the paramedics, and they were, they were with me for three th three hours trying to yeah. get trying to bring me around um and they carted me off in a um in the ambulance and I, apparently I, I stopped breathing so they had to bring, bring me back yeah uh, there were like there were two ambulances and like two re response cars outside our house where i had like a three hour seizure um and i was in hospital for like just for like two nights yeah, it's so, pretty scary, isn't it? Especially when you don't remember and you wake you up. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I woke up in the A and E, and my, my my younger brother was still in the area because it's just after Christmas, and uh, he he didn't go home until everything had settled down. But you're right, if it's you, you kind of where am I? What's going on? You know, you, you're so tired as well. You phys you're physically exhausted and mentally exhausted as well. Yeah. You know, it took took me quite some time to get my stuff right. You know. Yeah, it, it does make you um, appreciate life a lot more. And yeah. it's unfortunate that some people don't do that. Uh, uh, you know, it's like at the moment that what I'm going through with he who shan't be named is just... The, the boy it's, wonder. It's draining. Um, yeah, sure. It's like I tell him that I love him, but when he starts getting depressed, he doubts it. He thinks it's all a lie and he just thinks that everything is like bullshit. And it's like babe come on sort sort yourself out so I'm, like I'm at the point now that i'm like do you know what i just can't be bothered mm, yeah i was like that last night uh when i was doing drawing you suddenly depression is like being smacked around the head with a mallet yeah and, it's, and suddenly everything just like seems to stop and you just you're stuck in just blur blur land you know, and then what well, happened? I was listening to music, but it, you know, but whilst you're in that depression or whatever, it's just absolute, not absolute nightmare. It really, really is. But you kind of start thinking, "Am I making this up? This depression?" And you can you can feel the difference from when you're being depressed to when you're not, because it's 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 like you know, suddenly the the, the clouds disappear and the sunshine appears out in your head, and it's like it, it's you know, it's really it's really really nice, but. Uh, it's it's not when it's depression. It's just a load of bollocks, really. <laughs> it really yeah. is. So um, people are saying they don't want you on the other side, Rob. Um, no, they probably don't. They're probably thinking, Jesus, we don't want you here. You're a nightmare. Um, Chris, that must have been scary. That is the most scary part. Uh, scary part is waking up and going, what? <laughs> um, that's that's true. It's like when you wake up and you're in a room that you don't know. You're like, hang on a minute, how the hell did I get here? What what's happened? Because when I have my seizures, I, I kind of phase in and out. I said to yeah. Tracy, I can I can hear you, but I just can't respond, and it's just this constant phasing in and out kind of thing. 
it's, it's just uh just you know they, they when i go to the doctor how long were you having well i don't know do i because phasing in and out you know <laughs> yeah i wasn't with it exactly yeah i'll admit i just wrote it all down while i was having a seizure kind of thing yeah See, when I woke up from the cardiac arrest, I had a tube because I woke up two days later and I had that tube down my throat. So it's like you wake up and you're gagging straight away. Oh, God. Like, what the hell's going on? So it's like completely different, like waking up, knowing that you were out having a good time and then waking up in hospital with everyone around you and they all look like you're about to die and you're like, okay, what the hell's going on? What brought that on? Um, someone spiked my drink. Oh. Yeah. Jeez. So it was the first year that I moved to Brighton um, and someone spiked my drink on a night out. Well, actually, it was Gay Pride. And, um, yeah, I woke up three days later at the hospital. Jeez. So yeah. it was quite um, quite a weird experience. Yeah, I can well imagine. I can well so, imagine. But, yeah, yeah. Um, Video on Friday is about my battle with um, the big C. The big C, which I've had to go and have another uh, set of bloods done this week. Oh yeah, you, you said the yeah. bruise. Yeah, the bruise appear. Yeah, massive bruise as well for no reason. So the doctor was like, "Yeah, just come in and get some bloods done." Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not going through that shit again. Uh, see you later, Lee. Thank you for coming. And I'll email you tomorrow, darling. Um, yeah, I'm not going through all that again. I'm not going to – I'm not putting people through it either. So I've already made up my mind. I've given Cam a long list of personal requests of songs to be played at the funeral, who's to carry me in, you know, getting um, cremated. All my life insurance is up to like, up to speed. so I've literally, I've done it. I've literally like, and everyone says, God, you're very morbid. And I'm like, no, I just can't be bothered to fight anymore. I'm done. Mm. I'm done. I'm done with it all. All I want to do is, you know, if it is anything, then I just want to enjoy what time I have. I don't want to be, keep being sick because I'm having treatment and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed it's nothing and it's just that I'm a fat slob and laying in bed I've bashed my knee and I've hurt myself but I don't know we'll see. I should find out um, over the next few days and then I'll, I'll obviously let you and Nando know before I tell anyone else. Cool, thanks, could be good yeah. but you know um, but yeah with regards to the channel it's, it's going really well um now that Mind and the Samaritans are on board, I, all their links are in um, each video now so that they can um, see that we're sharing them out. And actually, I got a great email from Mind the other day, which they said um, they were actually very impressed with our Open Forum podcast. Okay. Um, where is it? Da, 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 da. Mind, mind, mind the gap, please. Uh, thank you very much for being a supporter with Mind. Your mental health podcasts are fantastic. It's great to see that you have a community that is interested in helping out people that suffer from mental health. Um. At the moment, we currently don't have the means to send a speaker to come onto your podcast. However, we will be sorting this out. So in in the future, if you'd like us to come and campaign on your podcast, we will be more than happy to do so. We always like people that advocate for mental health. Mental health is not, is not seen as a priority within the NHS, which seems to be sad. But you can find helplines and information through various websites. And then it's given me their website. Um, and that was from Supporter Relations. Really nice guy. Really interested in what we're doing. Um, and, yeah, it, it's like at the end of the day, it's if we're doing something that mind think is good, then, yeah. you know, it's good Absolutely. for us. Yeah. 
yeah it's, it's and also that, that you know you're being noticed as well yeah you know, which, is, which is really really good because i mean these you know youtube's you know it's, it's a massive world you know and and to, to know that you're making a difference or people are taking notice is like wow you know so yeah when you think oh nothing's nothing you know people aren't taking interest they are you know, so it just goes to show you know it's all it's all worth it at the end of the day yeah but that's it it's like lee on sunday that i thought that was a great podcast it was it was really, really good I, I apologize to keep darting on and off our dogs don't behave sometimes and our, our little dog got out and tracy couldn't get tracy couldn't get him back in again but they've they've behaved well tonight they've been very good we've kept the back door open tracy <laughs> has behaved very well tonight <laughs> you haven't need to go out in the garden to the toilet she's done well no she's done, she's done very well Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew it was coming. <laughs> It'll be there somewhere. Be this there somewhere. is what we like. We we like Tracy's <laughs> laugh. Everyone likes Tracy's laugh. She's very popular. She's more she popular than very me. Popular. Yeah. So, Just oh, imagine wow. who. When, when, if, if Mister, Tracy... I'm so sorry that you had two husbands that passed away. I wish my two ex-husbands were no longer here. They would make my life easier. But having two husbands pass away, that's quite crazy. And, uh, yeah, much love to you, my darling, for that. Jeez. Yeah. I, I, losing my nan was the toughest thing for me. Um, and do you know what? It's really bad, but I think... I don't think I'm going to be that worried when my parents go because because of the fallout that we had when I was younger and we didn't, like, get on or chat for a while. I don't know if I'm going to be as affected as what I was with my nan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've lost my, I lost my dad. I've lost my older brother. Um, but, it, you know, it, things, you know, you'd be... It, it does change your outlook on, on life. Mm. You know, I, I have my brother's ashes uh, with me. We were going to scatter them at a, um, a family place we used to go quite a lot when we were younger, but um, I didn't feel as ready to let him go. So I, I just spoke to my younger brother and said, do you mind if I keep them kind of thing? So he's on the um, our memor me um, memorial kind of cabinet with yeah. uh, Danielle stuff as well. So... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it gives me some comfort that they're there. I know it's a bit strange, but they, there no, you go. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. I wish I could have had my nan, but my dad and my uncle wanted to scatter her, and that was it. I wasn't even allowed to keep a little bit. But I did say to Cameron, what I want him to do is, um, uh, yes, Katie, you can drop me an email. Not a problem, darling. You have my email address. Um I said to uh, Cam, what I want him to do, because he is like in charge of whatever happens to me, regardless of whether we're friends or relationship or whatever, he's the only person I, I truly know needs the help. So that's why I've left everything to him. So it's like, I know he needs the help. Um, and I said to him, I said, just do me one favor. Take my phone when I die, unlock it, take a picture of a black wall. And then send a text to everyone in the church saying it's bloody dark in here, just as they lower <laughs> me coffin down. Um, yeah, he, he didn't know what to say about that. He was like, really? I was like, yeah, go on. Let's just have a giggle. Let's see what people are like. Because I don't want people to dress up in black. I'm gay, for Christ's sake. So I want it to be all like, woo, yeah, happy chappy, you know, all that. But, yeah. Oh, wow, your nan is 95 this year, Jay. Oh, yeah, my nan was 93, I think, when she passed. Cranky old bird. She had Alzheimer's. Oh, she, hated, she hated the fact that my dad put her in the care home. She hated the food. She never got, um, never got fed, apparently. She did. She always got fed. <laughs> but what I used to do, I used to go and take her to... Um, uh, McDonald's and she would get a burger a double uh, burger a Big Mac isn't it she'd get yeah. a Big Mac she'd split the burger in half <laughs> put half in the napkin 
Oh no! And take it, take it back to the home, so she had food and eat the other half. So I was like, bless her. Um, <laughs> my son was twelve when Randy passed, and twenty three when he he was, and he's my rock. Oh bless! How old is your son, Lissa? Just out of interest. Twenty twenty four. Sounds like a very good boy, a very good lad, um, looking after you, and that's what's needed. In times like that, it is what's needed. It is, yeah. You know, it's... 24 20, now. No, that's a good age. It's a good age. A, a mature 24 as well. Yeah, well, you do, don't you? You grow up very quickly when you lose someone. You know, 12, yeah. that was probably a, a tough time for him. Mm. Um, and then 23. Yeah. yeah, tough. It's, it's it's not life. Death death is um is horrible. But I suppose we all got to suffer it at some point. We do, we do. Yeah. Just, at the moment, he doesn't want to seem to let me go up there. I don't know why. <laughs> it's a bit mean, really. I'm tired. I just want to go up there now. It's like, but I'm you know, I'm doing good with the podcast. We're all doing really well with the sh- with the shows. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As, yeah. Long you don't, as, long you don't, as long as you don't get Danny Moss, Johnny, Danny Moss on, don't have him on. Do you not like Danny? No, he's, a, he's just a big knob. No. <laughs> now, me and Nando like Danny. We met yeah. him and he was great to drink with and have a laugh with. Um, but then he said something after Beardo and that lot had been to the hotel. That made him look a bit of a knob. All right. And after that, I was like, do you know what? I really don't want to associate with you. Mm. It's like me and Nando were both part of the Global Ghost Hunt. Um, and we used to stream on another network. But then we just decided that it wasn't for us anymore. And it was like time for us to go. And then obviously we all started getting those horrible messages and comments in the chat, which yeah. obviously was something to do with that. But now it's just like... I have two bigger broad shoulders. I get on with it, and I'm just like, do you know what? Sod it. If I upset people, I don't care. Um, And I don't have to kiss anyone's ass to get along with their face. Unless I'm dating them, then I'll happily kiss their ass. But I don't have to kiss anyone's ass. Um, I do my own thing. That's why, like, people have been saying about the podcasts are really nice um, with the poems, like the little daily ones. So that's why I've been reading poems, because it's quite, um, yeah, it's quite nice to write poems. Although I won't be writing him any any time soon, so uh, I'm going to not write him any now. I'm going to make him suffer for a little while. <laughs> um, what What did Danny Moss say? Danny, well, uh, he said it was when he was going on about the bunkers. Oh After right, Beardo and that lot are gone. Uh, when he was moaning that. The bunkers hadn't stood up for the hotel. I think it was after um, was it Side Eye Guy done that? Take the piss. Oh yeah, 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 and broke um, Brett's glasses, the glasses. And, yeah, and it was at that point that it was like um, I thought, Do you know what, you're a dickhead, mate. Just because Beardo and GSI aren't coming out and saying, "Yeah, you know, it's true, it, nothing's fake," there, you're you're having a go and moaning about everyone. So, yeah, that place is still up for debate, isn't it? It's not, um, you know. What about the ones over in America now? Because they got my haunted HQ, haven't they? With Daryl. Well, Martin. I mean, this is it. It's just a just big part of shit, really, isn't it? I mean, uh, when he when. Danny did his haunted hunts thing. He, they went to um, the Pendle Hill. They went to one of the places where most haunted went to. Yeah. And at, at the end of one of the episodes, they apparently caught a, an apparition of a, a shape um, walking around the um, the corner on the top corridors. But when you look back at Parpol stuff, you think, did they really stage that? Was it was it all kind of for views? Yeah. You know. I, I just don't... Know, isn't it? Sometimes, like, sometimes I watch the debunking side of things, and I think, oh, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe. But then sometimes I I listen to the likes of Neil, whose work with Sam and Colby, 
and said that while he was walking around with them, everything they'd done was legit because he, he won't work with anyone that's fake, which right. is why he hasn't done work with some of the bigger teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, you get the likes of Patty that says, yeah, Zach um, laughs and screams like a girl, but doesn't fake anything because she wouldn't risk her reputation onto that. Yeah. And that just makes you think. But then, who knows? No one's really going to know, are they? Unless no. you're there yourself personally. Absolutely. And you actually see it happen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It's all right when you watch watch the the TV show and then you you sit there and think, well, that that's clearly fake. Mm. Uh, and that's fake. But, you know, if um, unless you're there, we don't really know. No, no. And they're, not, they're not exactly going to tell you either. No. <laughs> no, they're not. When it, when they're it, not going to say right. We're about to fake this part. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another lady I want to get back on the show is MJ Dixon. Who's that? She's an author, a paranormal investigator, a psychic medium. Um, me and Nando have both interviewed her. She's very good. She's not long come back from um, Africa after learning about witchcraft and that in Africa. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Um, and she used to be an executive producer on Destination Fear until her and Mr. Baggins fell out. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. And she she actually told us on our last time that we had her on, um, she told us that she had been approached by someone. She wouldn't say who. Uh, fake stuff and she just walked off set and went thank you very much goodbye wow but okay. she said they're big so mm-hmm. blue sky Lee says danny was on paranormal monkey the other night whatever that is do you know what paranormal, paranormal monkey, monkey. Is? let's have a look at paranormal monkey i can have a quick look at that and see what that is i've not heard of that one no please don't tell me he's appearing on more bloody tv shows he will be when he's over there. He will, he'll be loving it. His ego will be that big that he won't be able to get on a plane home. Mm, I can't see anything for Paranormal Monkey. Dan, Danny was on a Paranormal Monkey. No. no, I can't see anything about Paranormal Monkey. So I'm not sure what that is. God. Well, this is it, isn't it? Why he's out in America, he's not pestering us. So that's no. a good one. Yeah. But, yeah. Paranormal Monkey is a podcast on YouTube to Sarah. Okay. Oh, Danny Moss. No comment yeah. then from me. Yeah, no, this is it. Paranormal Monkey was in Beardo's Live on Tuesday. Okay. Hmm. I kind of get the feeling that with with YouTube and people seem to be using it as as a new job. That once they go on, once they go down that that road of they've actually made some money from faking paranormal, they can't go back. Once they once they've touched it, they think, oh, we want to a winner here. Yeah. And if and if you're um, you've got a good team behind you editing and doing your special effects. Then uh, until you get caught by the debunkers, like what's happening with the Foreman brothers, which you, you got to know they're full of bollocks anyway. You know, you, surely people. The minute, are... the minute them two went in that fucking stupid house that Omar done, it was yeah. like, well, they're fake because yeah. anyone that's associated with Omar is fake. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the minute you go in there, you've ruined your reputation. Even if you were the best ghost hunter on the planet, you're fake because you've gone into that situation where, you know, no one's going to trust you because it's associated with bloody Omar and Yasko and all that lot. That's it. Um, so, well, basically, it's just one big fake fest, really, isn't it? So, but hey, oh, well, I Not think. You know, we nearly hit the two-hour mark again. I know, we've done very, very well. 
Yeah, and Nando failed to turn up. So was he going to come up? Or come on. He did say he was going to try. He took Sarah try. out for Valentine's Day, so they went for a meal and something romantic and lovey dovey and. Ugh. He's, probably, he's probably gone up two steps on his two steps on the stairs and fallen over. <laughs> yeah, too too many Baileys laying on the floor again. <laughs> so, I'll have, to ch- I'll have to check out this paranormal thing. See if I can go. Yeah, have have a look at it. It's um, well, yeah. You can um, you can build your own ticket now because all the main tickets have sold out. But you can build your uh, own ticket now. So and it is it's good fun, mate. I will go next year. I will go back next year. Um, but yeah. Very true. Paranormal nightmare associated with Omar, and that was the beginning of the end. It really was. And this is the trouble. People need to be careful who they're prepared to work with. That's it, and associate themselves with as well. Yeah, because you know. if you've got a great, um, a great like podcast, for example, we've yeah. got a great podcast. If I suddenly go to Ben and Laney and say, "Oh, do you want to come on the podcast?" The whole credibility is going to go down the pan, isn't it? Because it's going to get down quicker than you can see it go down, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like I don't want to. I, you know, I'm not going to ruin what I. I could go and send a, a hundred emails to people that are ghost hunts uh, or uh, podcasters, and then obviously be fake, get them on the channel. A, the community are going to rip the piss out of them and say you're all fake. Yeah. Um, and then our credibility as hosts will go right down the pan. So what's that's the point? It. That's it. You've built up all this credibility over the years, and the next minute you've done, you've took up the wrong step with the wrong people. Yeah. Um, it looks like Chris and Tracy are going to have a good night. Nudge, nudge, <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. This uh, on a tongue thing again, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Where Tracy's going to get the old paddles out, you know, the old gimp mask and the paddles, and away oh, she yeah. goes. Yeah, it'll all be coming out, won't it? We yeah. swing from the ceilings. Nick Whitlash. <laughs> no, we're not with Whitlash. No, no, no. <laughs> there we go, team. <laughs> Definitely Miss <laughs> <Ms>. Whitlash. <laughs> she knows. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm giving her ideas. I keep talking to her. I'm giving her ideas. She's going to be like, right, I'm going to buy a whip, a 12-inch dildo. Yeah, he's going to be in pain. A mushroom. I've never seen it. Uh, I've never dressed up as a, uh, a, a gnome. Way and get mass sitting on a on a mushroom. <laughs> but what, what's the mushroom going to be? The mushroom's going to be a giant. No, no it's not. Deal. No, <laughs> mushroom's going to be a butt plug. No, your fishing rod's going to be one of no. those double ended dildos, and then you're going to have a gimp mask and and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad Papa's not here. <laughs> <laughs> be quite amusing, I think. So. Oh, yeah, I'm on pointy ears. Mm. And your pointy ears. Can't forget the pointy ears. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. But, yeah, that being said, thank you very much, everyone. So next next video, will proper video, will be Friday night. Um, and then we are all live on Sunday. Apart from Nando, who won't turn up. No, Nando will be here Sunday. So we're live at... 7.45 Sunday, and Wednesdays we are going to 8 o'clock starting, not 9 o'clock. Okay, okay. Because I want to try and get the show finished before the boy comes home from rugby. So you can run him a bath food. and all that, yeah. No, no, I'm not doing that anymore. It's so I can have <laughs> food ready and stuff like that. So, Oh, uh, breaking news. An asteroid has just flown past the Earth. Fake near news. Missing it. Fake, fake. What no, is it? come from NASA. Well, well, happened, there you go then. Happened days ago. Uh, Space Rock dubbed 2024 CY1 passed very close to the Earth and the Moon on Monday. If it had been, it was the size of a double decker bus which weighs a hundred hundreds of tons, the astronomers said the third, so there was three of them. They all passed all passed at a distance. If it had been seventy five thousand miles closer, it would have got drawn. Oh, is that all seventy five oh okay. 
Yeah, but 75,000 miles in space isn't really that much, is it? Oh, I don't know. Is it really? I don't know. It sounds not with gravity. You think about it. I I thought Katie had just put night all safe sex, but it says stay <laughs> safe. No. Valentine's oh, Day does some really crazy stuff. Strange stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, does some really crazy stuff. Plays yeah. with your head badly. <laughs> yeah. Plays with my, yeah, literally <laughs> plays with your head. Okay, no, on that note then. Um, yes, I think we'll go now. We're talking about heads now. Yeah, we'll go yeah. now. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to everyone. Thank for you. Yeah. We will see you all on Sunday. Sunday for the live show. But Chris and Nando will be in the live chat on Friday. I will be out. out saving the members of the public like I always do yes. at the weekend, doing my service. Um, and, um, yeah, much love. God bless. Okay. And see you, guys. See you all soon.